Let's make this audio reactive particle visualizer in touch designer right now. And if you want to download the project file that you're looking at on my screen right now exactly the way it is, then look in the description of this video. Make a new touch designer project. And now we're just going to find our audio file and we're gonna drag and drop our audio file into touch designer. So let's do that right now. Here's how to find the audio file that I use in this tutorial. Just go to this address right here, openmusicarchive.org. And then you see this box of music. So here is the song that I used, Georgia Stomp by DJ Assault. And then I clicked on view track. Then I just clicked on hear more on SoundCloud. Then just click on the more button and click download file. Now just drag this file into touch designer, just like this. Now we have our music. Now that we have our music, let's make it so that we can hear the music. Just right click on the output of the audio file that we dragged and dropped in. And then under the chop category, just click on audio device out and drop audio device out somewhere below the audio file. And then I just click on the bypass button to bypass that, to act as a mute switch, basically. It can get annoying to listen to the same song over and over and over while you're building this, so you can bypass that audio file out and still keep the operator there. Now let's take a look in the palette. And in the bottom half of that, let's just scroll down until we see audio analysis. Now just drag and drop audio analysis somewhere to the right of our audio file. And now let's drag a connector from the end of our audio file onto the input of the audio analysis operator. And now just right click on the output of the audio analysis. And then in the chops category, just click on null and then place null to the right of audio analysis. Now we have this null operator that is showing us the outputs of all the channels that the audio analysis operator is getting but we don't see the channel names, so all we need to do is zoom in. There we are zoomed in, we can see the channel names of what the audio analysis operator is picking up from our music file. And once we see this, we know that we are in business. Now we're gonna right click on the end of the null operator, and under the chops category, we're just gonna click on select and place that somewhere to the right of the null. Now just click on the select operator, and in the parameters for the select operator under channel names, we're just going to type in mid and press enter and then scroll down a little bit and you can see that in our select operator we have chosen only the mid channel. So now we know we can just take any of these channel names in the audio analysis and type it into the parameter of the select operator to get just that one channel from our audio analysis. So for example, if we want the snare detection to do something in our animation, then we can just type in snare detection into the parameter of the select operator. And I'm gonna to go to the parameters of the select operator right now and type in snare detection and hit enter. And now you can see the snare is being detected by our audio analysis. Now let's right click on the output of our select operator and in the chops category, just click on lag and then place lag somewhere to the right of the select operator. Now you can see that instead of this select operator just being like a quick flash of a signal, now it has some lag so that it's kind of a more organic signal instead of just on or off 100% or 0%. Now it has like some fall off where it actually kind of creeps back down. Let's do a quick recap. First, we have our music file. Then we have an audio analysis operator that is analyzing our music file. Then we have a null operator that is showing us what channels the audio analysis is getting out of our music file. And then we have a select operator that is selecting only one single channel out of our music file. Then we have a lag operator that's just adding a little bit of lag to the signal that we're getting out of our music file. And then we have an audio device out operator that is simply making it so that we can hear our music as we make this project. And I just press the bypass button on that audio device out operator. Now let's add a new operator and let's place that somewhere above the lag so that we can use lag to feed a signal into the new operator that we're about to place. At this point, we're gonna go back into the palette 
And in the palette, just scroll down in the bottom half of that until you see Particles GPU. And then we want to click on Particles GPU and drag it and drop it somewhere above our lag, just like this. So now we have our Particles GPU operator. And now let's right click on the output of our Particles GPU operator. And in the top category, let's just click on Null and then place Null somewhere to the right of Particles GPU. Just click on the button that says display on our null operator. Now we can see Particles GPU displaying in the background of Touch Designer. I'm going to go ahead and close the palette to make more room. Now we are going to drag and drop the lag operator onto a parameter of our Particles GPU operator. So to do that, just click on the viewer active button that you see on the screen right now. Just click on viewer active. And now when you hover over the lag operator, the mouse turns into this triangle shape. So once we've clicked on the viewer active button for our lag operator, just go ahead and click on the particles GPU operator. And with the particles GPU operator selected, we are just going to click and drag the lag operator and drop that onto the particle size max parameter of our particles GPU operator. So click on the lag operator, drag that and drop it into the particle size max field just like this, and then click on export chop. Now your screen should be looking just like mine right now. And I think those particles are growing too quickly basically to make a good animation. So I'm gonna go back to our select operator and then click on the select operator and go to the parameters for the select operator and under channel names, I'm going to change that from snare detection to kick detection. So now we have kick detection. I'm going to press enter. And the signal that's coming from our kick detection is pretty strong. I'm actually going to reduce that signal a little bit to make it not so drastic. And the way that we're going to do that is to click on viewer active button of our lag operator. Then we're going to right click on the output of our lag operator. And in the chop category, just click on math and place the math operator somewhere to the right of our lag operator. And now in the parameters of our math operator, click on the tab that says mult add, and then under multiply, just change that from one to about 0 0.8 or 0 0.5, something like that. Then let's click on the viewer active button of the math operator. Let's select the particles GPU operator. And now we're going to click and drag and drop math onto the particle size max parameter. So just click on the math operator, drag that and drop it onto particle size max. Click on export chop. And now with the math operator selected, now we can just adjust the multiply parameter until the variations of the particles GPU operator are not so drastic. So for now, I just changed that to about 0.25. Now let's click on the Particles GPU operator to select that. Now go to the Render tab of the Particles GPU operator. And where that says Texture, we're just going to change Texture to Circle. So just click on Circle from the Texture drop-down menu. And then for the toggle switch that says Face Camera, just turn that to On. And then in the Compositing drop-down menu, just change that to Discard Alpha. Click on Discard Alpha. Now we're just going to open our web browser and find an image file that we can basically drop into Touch Designer that is going to be used as the face of our particles. In your web browser, you just want to go to Google Images and then search for Smile Emoji PNG. And in the search results, just click on the result from esquilo.io. Now right click on the image file, save that image file to your computer. Now let's just drag and drop that image file into Touch Designer. Now let's reposition that operator so that we have a little bit more room in between it and the Particles GPU operator. Then just right click on the output of the image file that you just dropped into Touch Designer. And in the top category, click on Chroma Key and place that to the right of your image file. Now with that image file operator selected, just go to the parameters for that operator and then go to the saturation tab. Just click and drag the saturation minimum slider until the white background is gone from our smiley face image. And I found that something like 0.04 should do it. 
and now you can see that the background has been removed from our image. Now let's just use that image to cover over these circles that are being produced by the Particles GPU operator. Click on the Particles GPU operator to select that. Make sure you click on the Render tab, and now in the Texture drop-down menu, just change that to Custom. So click on Custom, and now just click and drag that chroma operator and drop it onto the particle texture map field of our particles GPU operator, just like this. And now our particles are smiley faces. So we have too many smiley faces in my opinion, so just go to the particles tab of the particles GPU operator and change the number of particles to something like 100. And now we have a much more manageable number of particles. Okay, now let's make it so that our animation switches from the smiley face to an excited face every time the snare drum hits. So just open up your web browser, go to Google Images, and type in this search phrase, Wikimedia Happy Smiley Face PNG. Go ahead and click on this result right here from commons.wikimedia.org. Right-click on the image file that appears in the right side of your browser. Save that image to your computer. Now just drag and drop that new image file into Touch Designer, just like this. Now just right click on the output of that new image file. And in the top category, just click on Switch. And then place that switch operator somewhere to the right of the new image file. Now connect the chroma operator to the switch operator so that both of the new image and the old image are attached to the switch operator, just like this. Now that our excited face and our smiley face are attached to the switch operator, just drag that switch operator and drop it onto the particles GPU operator. Drop that switch operator onto particles GPU and then select Particle Texture Map. Now click on the switch operator and click on the slider of the index parameter. So now when we drag this index value above one, you'll see that the face switches to the other image. And there we go, smiley face, excited face. Smiley face, excited face. And the purpose of this is so that we can use our audio analysis to automatically change from the smiley face to the excited face every time the snare hits in the music. And I actually have these backwards, so I'm just gonna press the little green arrow on Chroma so that that is above very stoked in the input operators list here. So I'm just gonna click on that green arrow and now when our index parameter is below the number one, it'll be the smiley face. And when it's above the number one, it will be the excited face that is going to appear every time the snare drum hits. So at 0 0.9, it is that smiley face. And after that goes above one, it's the excited face. Now we're just going to add a few audio related operators to automatically change this index value for us whenever the snare drum hits. Now let's go to the part of our project where we are getting the kick detection channel from our audio analysis. And that's basically these three operators right here. Let's hold down the shift key, select those three operators, right click, and then click copy. Now right click in an open area of the grid and click paste. And now just reposition those operators below the existing operators, kind of like this. Now in our select two operator, just click on that operator. And in the parameters for this operator under channel names, just change that from kick detection to snare detection. So we change that to snare detection and press enter. And now we have two channels coming from our audio analysis. The first is the kick detection and the second is the snare detection and then click the viewer active button that is on our math two operator, which is outputting our snare detection signal. And now we just want to drag and drop that math two operator onto the box for the index value of our switch operator, and then click on export chop. 
And I don't know if this is a bug in Touch Designer or what, but when I drag that new math operator onto the switch operator, it changed the particles GPU parameter that we previously set on the particle size max. So if this happens to you, don't worry, just make sure the viewer active button is turned on for that kick detection, and then re-drag the kick detection onto the particle size max parameter for your particles GPU, just like this, and click on Expert Shop. At this point, let's just adjust the parameters of our Math2 operator until we have the right settings so that our smiley face switches to our excited face whenever the snare drum hits. So we have our Math2 operator selected, and in the parameters of that, I just changed under the Mult Add tab, I just changed the Pre-Add to something like 0.1, then change the multiply to something like six, five or six, something like that. And you can also change the post add if you'd like. And the best way to do this is to unbypass your audio file out. So turn off the bypass that we clicked on earlier for the audio device out operator so that you can hear the audio and you can hear when the snare drum hits. And when I listen to the audio, it looks like my settings in the math operator are actually pretty good but I think we need a little bit more lag so that the excited face sticks around for a little bit longer. It's not just quite a quick flash. So I'm going to select the lag operator, the second lag operator. So just click on the lag two operator. And in that lag two operator under the lag parameter, just change that lag value up to about one. And now you can see that excited face sticks around a little bit longer because now the signal has more lag in it. Now let's make a couple of fine tunings or adjustments. So click on that particles GPU operator and in the parameters for the particles GPU operator, I'm just going to change the particle size min and let's just change that to something like 0.027 and hit enter. And then let's click on our math one operator so that we can view the parameters for that. If you still have the viewer active button activated on that, just click on that viewer active button to deactivate the viewer active button. Make sure the math one operator is selected and then just change the multiply parameter in the math one operator to about 0 0.9 or maybe 0 0.75, whatever you prefer. Now I'm just going to do some rearranging of our operators so that it looks a little bit prettier. So I just rearranged our operators so it's a little bit more cleanly organized and our wires are not crossed. Now let's add a black background to our animation. So let's just go to the null operator that is at the end of our project here. Let's right click on the output of the null operator at the end of our project. And in the top category, let's just click on transform, place transform somewhere to the right of null. And in the parameters of that transform operator in the fourth box of the background color parameter, just change that from zero to one and then turn on the switch that says comp over background color. Now let's turn off the display switch for our null two operator, and let's turn on the switch for the display button on our transform operator. And now we have a black background color for our audio reactive particle visualizer. So here we have a rough version of our audio reactive particle visualizer. At this point, I recommend you change some parameters, do some fine tuning so that it looks a little bit smoother. But that's it for now. I hope you found this video useful and enjoy.